Well, hey, Nathan, uh, welcome to The Musician Beat. Really pumped to have you join us here, our new series, to find out what on earth is going on with our musicians when we all can't get together and do concerts. So hope things have been going well, and um, we're just thrilled to have you on the program. Thank you so much. This is very exciting. So this is going to be an interesting conversation. You work on some behind-the-scenes stuff at the symphony anyway, and your role as personnel manager. You're also in our trumpet section, as you've been for many years. And then you, you have uh, some other things you do during the day that people may not even know about. So just to help us figure out you know, where this is all coming from, tell us just briefly about your life, kind of how you got to this point. Well, I, I, you're exactly right. I mean, there's, there's so many different things that, that I do you know, between my work as a personnel manager with the orchestra, you know, playing in the trumpet section, and then, you know, my life outside of, outside of music. And, um, you know, it really goes back to when I started with, with the symphony back in the year 2000 when I was an undergraduate at the University of Northern Iowa. Um, I studied trumpet, studied with, with our principal trumpet in, in the orchestra, Randy Grabowski, and, you know, I had my first substitute trumpet playing opportunity um, really in the spring of the first year that I was on campus. So the spring of 1998 is the first time that I subbed with the orchestra. And I mean, what a wonderful experience. And, you know, when there was an opportunity to, to finally audition for, you know, an open seat, you know, I, I auditioned and that was in 2000 when I was still an undergrad and I was fortunate enough to, to, um, to win that seat. And, um, you know, I've been a member of the orchestra ever since. And I graduated from college with a music degree and a business degree and, you know, my daytime life has, has been all human resources related. <laughs> so I find myself today as a director of human resources um, at the University of Iowa, because I reside with my family in Iowa City. Um, and I have continued to play, you know, with the orchestra all of these years. And um, in 2008, assumed the role of personnel manager. And that has just been a really wonderful experience to be able to work you know, at a different level and in a different capacity with our musicians on stage. You know, uh, I think people are always fascinated to hear about the musicians they see on stage and who they may not know personally, but but your bio is is particularly unique, and, and I want to get into the personal side too. I mean, you've got a wonderful family and all this stuff, but, but, um, but just dialing back quickly to some of that day job stuff, I mean, uh, sometimes in orchestras, uh, the job of personnel manager maybe isn't the most, I guess, enviable job to have. It, it's not an easy job sometimes, and especially here in Iowa where everybody is physically spread out who play in the different orchestras. Uh, but then you've also got this amazing, what I assume is invaluable experiences in human resources outside of music. Um, just talk a little bit more about the nature of being um, in, right in the middle of the personnel mix, whether it's for the symphony or, or for a huge organization like the University of Iowa. Well, I think they really tie in you know, much together. I mean, the, the, the things that come up day to day at the University of Iowa, maybe just on a larger scale because it's such a large institu institution. I mean, the orchestra has the, those same sorts of things. And I, I, I feel like, um, you know, as personnel manager, it's all about building relationships with the musicians. And so you can help them, um, you know, understand, you know, what are, what are some of the asks that we have as an orchestra related to, you know, making sure they're they're um, in appropriate dress and coming to rehearsal on time, and you know all of those things that I think um, you would assume would just happen. Well, you know, there's some of that management that has to happen day to day, and just being able to communicate with musicians when they have any sort of concern or feedback back to the orchestra. You know, it, it's very relatable with my daytime job working in human resources and that personnel job that I that I work in with the symphony. That's really interesting, and I think I think sometimes folks, even inside the organization, don't quite realize that you very often can be the the face, like the direct line of communication. You know, I think, hey, you know, every musician sees me when they come to rehearsal. I'm standing on the podium, and they listen to what I say, and hey, it's great. But in reality, all the important conversations happen between you and all the musicians. And so, one of the things I just want to add to that before we move on to maybe uh, some some other stuff is just um, I think that the reputation you have is just. Uh, so incredible and that how much respect uh, so many of these musicians all around the state that you work with have for you and I, I think it clearly indicates the kind of job you do on behalf of the symphony and I'm sure in your other work as well I'm sure you're doing a lot of extra work right now at Iowa too so <laughs> certainly certainly and thank you so much for that feedback I mean like I said it's it's all about building 
you know, credibility and rapport with the people that you work with. Um, and, and that just goes back to that, that experience that the musician has with our orchestra. Well, uh, well, I think that's, uh, we benefit tremendously from the fact that we have you on our team, so we appreciate it. Uh, but, you know, I guess it, it is true that maybe talking about HR and personnel could, could make our, our patrons' eyes glass over just a little bit. So let's, let's go on to some more interesting topics. Um, music, of course, has been a huge part of your life. Um, tell us quickly just how you got started in music and, and the trumpet, and then maybe kind of fast forward it to, to what it is about the instrument that keeps you doing it, even though, like you just described, you have a full-time job and a part-time job before we even start talking about playing an instrument. Well, right, exactly. I mean, I I really um, was brought up the traditional route of learning an instrument in the public school system. So I started playing trumpet in the fifth grade. Um, I was born and raised in the state of Iowa. Um, so Atlantic Community Community Schools in Southwest Iowa. I started in the fifth grade, and um, you know, took lessons with the band director um, once a week, and um, really enjoyed it. A lot of my friends played in band and. You know, took some private lessons, had a very successful, you know, high school musical career, you know, performing at the Allstate Music Festival, um, um, performing with, you know, our jazz band at a number of different competitions and marching band and really getting that well-rounded musical experience. I mean, that's, I think I, that I want to have 100% attribute my upbringing on the trumpet to how I got to where I'm at today. And as far as, you know, the trumpet itself, I mean, I mean, it's just become a, a part of me as a person over the years, you know, and thinking back, you know, 30 years ago or so, or so, <laughs> nearly 30 years ago. <laughs> we'll give or take a, a couple of years there. We don't have to reveal the truth right. on today's program. Right. <laughs> yeah, for me, I mean, I, I really like, you know, the trumpet can be, it can be so much. It can be sort of like the leader of a group. It can also be um, about balancing and blending um, within an orchestra or within a, a section of trumpet players um, and really being that supportive role. So I just, and, and you get to play as a trumpet player so many different genres of music. I mean, orchestral music, and I, I do a lot with, with playing um, musicals and a lot of jazz work. I mean, there's the trumpet is such a versatile instrument, you can just do so much with it. Yeah, it really is. I think kind of if you just hang around orchestras, you feel like, well, maybe the trumpet's kind of a one-trick pony. You just play in the big moments and then, yeah. you know, hanging out in between. But but like you said, there's there's not only so much out there generally for trumpet, but I think even within the, the classical tradition, I think about you and Randy seeing you guys on stage so often when we do Baroque music, when we do Mozart and, and Beethoven and Schubert, but then all the way down to the big stuff, the Mahler and Stravinsky. So you guys really are... Um, a major presence in the in the orchestra. Um, now, speaking of which, I have to put you on the spot and have you tell us just about something that happened while on stage with the symphony. I mean, I think it's always fun for people to hear about things that may go on behind the scenes. It could be a general thing that happens all the time or something that happened once that you just can't forget. Um, now, I'm going to preface this question by just saying, I don't know what you'll say. However, um, I could tell a thousand stories about amazing, hilarious things that have happened when you've been on stage. Uh, I'm going to leave those for another conversation. Oh, I'm going to sure. leave it up to oh, you. Sure. <laughs> <laughs> well, I mean, there, there's, of course, the, you know, brass players dropping mutes, and everybody in the entire hall can hear the dropping of the mutes and, <laughs> you know, dumping things over, stands and water, and, you know, there's all of those things. And, um you know, maybe missing an entrance here, here and there, but, you know, I will tell you one that, one that I remember, um, from just a couple of years ago of, uh, when we played what, what we actually refer to now as the, the cricket symphony, where backstage, somehow a cricket got into the backstage of Gallagher and it was so quiet. The second movement of, you know, our last piece, our symphony work, and all you could really hear was that cricket. And, you know, I have to, I have to admit that I think I was the one that let that cricket into the backstage <laughs> area. <laughs> it's a danger I with, forget that. yeah, danger with late summer in Iowa. You leave that door open for a few minutes and who knows what will wind up in there. And, and I have to, I have to give you guys credit. It can be difficult in the back of the orchestra there to hold it together when everybody's starting to lose it, especially when something like that is happening. Um, <laughs> but, 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 uh. You know, I guess I guess for you guys, the the saving grace might have been in that moment not having to play in the uh, in the immediate, you know, turn there while listening to that that cricket. 
Um, well, speaking about music, you know, obviously this whole thing that we've been dealing with here with the emergence of this global pandemic over the last couple of months has um, affected everybody's lives in so many ways that we didn't expect. But now as we see kind of different places in the world sort of returning closer to normal, other places struggling, you know, sort of just dealing with all of this, one thing remains consistent, which is that big indoor gatherings like concerts are just not on the immediate time frame for anybody, really. I think even in some of the societies that are kind of close to a full reopening. So um, I don't know, what are your thoughts more generally about that as a musician? How does it feel to be locked out of, you know, what we've been used to all our lives in terms of our profession? And is there anything else that you've been doing to kind of keep the musical juices flowing? <laughs> Well, you know, I have to say that, um, you know, with all of this just being so unexpected and, and um, you know, it's been such a fluid situation, things changing, you know, week by week, I think that, you know, I agree with, you know, the, the sentiment that, you know, it's going to be maybe quite some time before we are back status quo where we've always been large group performances with the full audience. Um, and it's become more and more difficult as a musician to sort of sit back and you think about all of the, the memories you have um, as a musician. And, you know, you do it so, for so many years. And, you know, for me, you know, going back even just a, a couple of months ago, it's you sort of stop and think, you know, routinely year after year after year in the spring, I mean, we're, we're performing. I mean, we're performing professional musicians. And then to have that void, it... it you're left without something, right? And so, you know, whenever I hear, you know, music on TV, like a, like live music, you know, even if it's just just a small, not even trumpet playing, you know, a small string um, string group, you know, it just it, it puts you into a place where you just miss it, and you just you want so badly to get back. And we know that we have to be creative with how we do that. And, um, I think the orchestra is doing a tremendous job thinking of, of all these alternatives we can have so we can keep music within our community for our patrons and for all of our community members. And I would say for me, trying to keep the music alive, I mean, you know, it's not too difficult. There's, there, we have a number of musicians in our household. That's and what my two young boys who are 10 and uh, just turned 10 as of yesterday and, and nearly 13, they both play um, cello. So they study Suzuki cello. And so... It's fun to still be able to hear them play, you know, their instruments and practice and help them with their practicing and me pulling out the trumpet and, you know, playing along with them. And and, um, and, and it also has allowed me some time to um, really just work on the things um, on the trumpet that I normally wouldn't have time to do because of my busy schedule, you know, with all of these different things that I have going on in my life. So, you know, if there's any silver lining, it's, it's allowed me to just sort of really sit back and think about, you know, you know, as a trumpet player, what are the things that now I have time to work on that I can really focus on, right? Yeah, make sure just you don't spray your neighbor with uh, all your saliva, yeah. I think, is, yeah, is exactly. a top priority. But uh, <laughs> Proper social distancing with, distancing with the neighborhood, right? Yeah, well, and I, I think, you know, you make a good point that, that the orchestra wants to get people back together, but we, we absolutely must do it safely and prudently, you know, and, and that's exactly what we're working on with the understanding that, you know, some groups like brass groups are easier to do in a distant setting. Sometimes our brass group already plays with everybody standing 10 feet apart. Um, so we're, we're taking that into account as we, as we, um, as we do this. And of course, surveying all the musicians, you've been involved in that process and, um, really fascinating to see everybody's points of view. Um, so, uh, to wrap up here, um, at, you know, we've kind of, covered covered a lot of territory um and i think i'd rather leave it open-ended to say what else would you like to share with our symphony patrons you know who are checking in to kind of find out what's happening with the symphony and see what's up with the musicians and anything else you'd like to share with our audience well i think that with the audience it's you know just great appreciation for all of the years um, that i've been on stage and it's amazing even after 20 years, I, I see so many of the same faces that I saw 20 years ago, and I see those folks today, and you know, just being appreciative and saying thank you to all of our patrons who have just been, um, you know, with us, you know, and, and come to our concerts, and it's just been wonderful to to build relationships with our patrons and to just be patient. We'll be back, and uh, you know, although it might not be 
what we're used to, you know, the, the music will be back, live music will be back. Um, we just, we have to, we have to do this right. We have to do this safely. Um, and, um, and hopefully you'll be back with us once we get back to that point. And I think that, you know, what you're doing with, with these interviews and, you know, looking back at past performances and, you know, some of the highlights of, of seasons past, I think is, is wonderful. Um, and I'm sure that our patrons, if they haven't done so already, you know, should really take a listen to a lot of those and, and remember back to, you know, what it felt like to be in the audience when we were performing that music. So. I think it, it'll keep us all excited to get back together again in person so. pretty soon. And, and I will say we're going to do some opportunities down the road here for our patrons to, to talk directly with our musicians like yourself and our staff. So we're looking forward to that. One thing I will say didn't surface in today's interview. We might have to do that with you around Halloween because I believe you are known. As being as being the person who develops the absolute best Halloween costumes for <laughs> the Symphony Halloween Week uh, every year, every year without fail. So well, um, it's really nice that we schedule, you know, a, a performance set the week of Halloween usually, and so that gives me <laughs> the opportunity to really express myself, you know, in the form of a Halloween costume. Yeah, and we, we'll bring that back. We want to make lots of room for expression, and certainly you have taken advantage of that uh, that uh, <laughs> space there. So. Uh, well, Nathan, really appreciate you joining us today, and, and I'm sure everybody watching does too. We can't wait to um, hear more from you again soon, especially, hopefully, coming out the end of that trumpet. I hope so, too. Uh, thank you so much, Jason, for the opportunity, and, and to everybody watching, thank you, and we'll be back soon. Thanks, Nathan. Great, thanks.